Hi, this is Nathan Seidel, founder of SparkFun Electronics, here today with another high-precision GNSS receiver. Quectel has recently released the LG290P. Now, Quectel's been around for a number of years doing cellular modules and different sorts of GNSS receivers, but the LG290P is unique in many different ways, including the fact that it has an RTK engine built in. So, for those of you that don't know about GPS or this is the first time you've sort of been exposed to high-precision GPS receivers, uh, these are more expensive but extremely precise receivers that get you down into the millimeters of accuracy compared to the thousands of millimeters or also known as meters of accuracy that a normal GPS receiver would give you. So out of all of our RTK engines, this is our fourth one. And uh, from various manufacturers, the Quectel one sets itself apart in that it is uh, smaller. Uh, it has higher reception. So it has the L1, L2, L5, and E6 band reception. So that's pretty phenomenal. Uh, it's smaller than other receivers, and it's also a lot cheaper than other receivers. So we're pretty excited by what this brings to the market. It's a standard breakout board with three UARTs, including USB-C and an SMA connector for the antenna, but let's go ahead and dive into what the output looks like inside uh, Pi GPS Client, some software that'll help us visualize just how accurate the readings are that we're getting from this new receiver. For today's demonstration, normally we would use our standard UFO antenna. This is a NGS calibrated antenna that we sell. It's L1, L2, L5, and E6, works really well. But uh, in today's demonstration, we thought we'd give it uh, a kind of fun and add in this newer tri-band antenna that we have, L1, L2, L5, and E6, uh, just to show you the performance on this little guy. So for today's demonstration, we're going to be using Pi GPS Client. Uh, open source software runs on Python to visualize in what's called a scatter plot to see the data coming in. Here we've got uh, the LG290P hooked up to USB. Uh, the LG290P is interesting in that it um, defaults to 460,800 bits per second. It's just really fast because by default, uh, it's outputting at 10 hertz, a, a pretty fast update rate uh, for an RTK engine. Now, if we're looking at the scatter plot, um, these cone-centric rings show us where those fixes are in, and today we're seeing a, a cluster of fixes within that two and a half millimeter to five millimeter ring. So if the device was out there in the world and we said, where are you? It would hover within just a few millimeters within uh, a volume. What's interesting about Pi, GPS client is that we asked for a new feature and they gave it to us. On this graph is a green dot. That green dot is representative of the antenna on our roof. We know the exact position down to a millimeter or two of that antenna's position. Now looking at the graph, we can see that the known truth is approximately eight millimeters away from the center of where the engine is telling us it is. So here we can sort of quantify or uh, say how accurate the engine is in comparison to where we know the antenna exists. So uh, it's incredibly accurate. It's eight millimeters away. Now this is a, a pretty good uh, scenario, best case scenario. The antenna for this receiver is just a few meters away from the base. Normally it would be a kilometer or two. So your accuracy, inaccuracies may go up. But again, um, we are using the very small helical antenna. So this is kind of an incredible test case where the LG290P is shining. The LG290P is interesting in that it is both a high power RTK receiver that will enable all sorts of, you know, robot control and autonomous vehicle and surveying and, and uh, academic research, uh, but also at a, at a lower cost. So the LG290P opens up access to a whole new market of high precision GNSS applications. So looking at the software, we can see the data on the scatter plot, but it's kind of hard to visualize that in real life. So today I've brought in a stack of five dimes. Dimes are approximately 18 millimeters in diameter, and this stack is about six and a half millimeters tall. So when we're talking about an inaccuracy of eight millimeters, we can literally start to uh, measure the distance in between some of the letters on dimes to show us eight, this is eight millimeters. This is the distance of where we can repeatably place the end of our surveying pole or or the location of our robot, or uh, any other sort of measurement that you would like to make. Um, we're now talking about the volume of a stack of dimes and a point cloud within that stack. So I specifically designed the LG290P breakout board to be pin and size and connector compatible absolutely with our very popular ZF9P breakout boards. So you'll find that the SMA and the USB-C connector and all the pins are in the same position as that breakout board. So it's an easy path to upgrade if you're looking to try out a different engine. This board has the USB-C to uh, USB to serial bridge as well as an external uh, supercapacitor. So that maintains your almanac and other things so you get a hot start every time that you, you plug in. Uh, we've got our 
our standard SMA connector, we've got an optional pulse per second connection if you're doing any kind of extreme timing. And then this is a locking uh, four pin JST connector. The locking JST connector is connected to UART three of the LG 290P. And then we have our classic sort of blue Smurf connector that's connected to UART two. So you can get your corrections over Bluetooth, you can connect to external embedded systems, or you can connect to the classic USB-C serial. If you're thinking of exploring high-precision GNSS, I highly recommend the LG 290P. It's a very powerful RTK engine at a price that currently can't be beat. I need to Higher-precision GNSS. What? Higher-precision, <laughs> exciting GNSS product. Uh -huh. And it's price, Kurt? It's price can't be beat.